Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do a roundup for Championship and League One after every match week. So I'm going to go over fixtures because a lot of them on telly now as well. So it's a lot easier to get like your insight or your thoughts on some games. Whereas normally, who in the right mind is ever going to get a chance to watch Portsmouth Luton at half 12 on a Saturday? No one. Not to be discriminating against League Two either, but I, di I didn't watch any. There were, were the one game on yesterday at the same time as like Sunderland Wednesday. I'm sorry, boys, but if I get a chance to watch Wednesday lose 4-0, there's no way in God's green planet that I'm watching League 2. That being said, I do just want to get straight in there because this Coventry Oxford game on Friday night, I didn't watch. Boo! I know, sorry, I watched Man United full of mystery EFL watching the corporate overlords. I know, I'm sorry, but it was opening game at Premier League. I had to do it. Obviously, I watched the highlights after and you can see stuff on Twitter. I'm, 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 I, I had half an eye on it, do you know what I mean? At the same time as I was watching Man United. And... Coventry won 3-2 to, to, what, a 96-minute goal against Adger, uh, for Adger Wright against a team that's just come up and they came up through playoffs as well. So, statistically speaking, you'd imagine this is the weakest team in the league at home based on last season. But I think Oxford are quite good. I really, really do. The signings that they've made are really good. The midfield, I don't even think that's the best one yet because they aren't... Um, when this ball comes in, El Mazzoni, that's when you'll know. And Oxford have obviously had a tough start. They had Norwich at home, which they won quite comfortably as well. And they had Peterborough at home in Cup midweek, and they bet them, like, comfortably. Without even getting out of second gear. Oxford-Peterborough were playoffs last season. This is a team that they beat to get to Wembley. And the the gulf in class now between two sides is just massive. I think Oxford are a good team. And Coventry... They're going to score a lot of goals, all right? Coventry are going to be a very good team this year. They're going to score a lot of goals. They've got they've got a forward line worth, what, 30 million quid. It's, it's a stupid team. But I do think they are going to be in danger of conceding a lot of goals because they constantly change the defence. It, it's not settled at all. Last season, you're starting Binks, this bloke. I can't even say his name. He's obviously been there before. But Binks, this bloke, and a new keeper called Dobbin in there. Last season... The, the main, like, back three, the core of their defence, the spine, were Bobby Thomas, Liam Kitchen, and Brad Collins, who went even on bench. So they've changed a lot of the defensive units again. And I feel like Coventry are obviously a very good team. And you can understand the splurge and spending loads of money when they originally sold Hamer and Gokarez and bringing in loads of different people in different positions to pack out a squad. Now it needs to be about finding little bits of quality in certain positions. You can't keep changing so many players at once because this league and the promotion is the effort taking this season especially with top at league i think being as weak as it is this time in championship coventry if they can settle a back line and they can get a settled team going there's no reason why these can't go up there's no reason at all they're a good side the places come on thomas asante off bench mason clark off bench the the i'll be shocked if they don't do it let's, let's put it that way but that that's a I, I won't be worried about Oxford either. That's that's a good result, effectively, for both teams. Because Oxford, in the first two games, would have took three points every day a week. After that Friday night, uh, that is, I'll just go bottom to top while I'm doing it like this. Watford beating Stoke 3-0 was not on my bingo card, I'll tell you that. Especially with Stoke beating Coventry 1-0 last week in opening game. I thought Watford might have started quite slowly. I definitely did not see a Watford smashing, but that's a very good result for them starting off. Obviously, Swansea as well. We had a big win against Preston. Preston are a bit of a mess at the minute, aren't they? I don't think they've scored in like the last eight league games, something ridiculous like that. It's just loads and loads of red, loads of losses, not a lot of chances created. They kept Ryan Lowe on through summer to make his signings for him to, then, for him to have a mutual agreement that he's not going to be managed after the first game. It's just a bit of a mess at top that's filtering down into the team with Preston, and it ain't good. And not only the opening couple of games, obviously there's some there's some big score lines coming up, but I never think there's going to be a load of goals in first first couple of weeks because it's a bit cagey in it like teams are trying to find their feet there's new signings new managers new tactics new systems all over the place with loads of different teams you'd think teams would focus more and not conceding and being a bit more tight and compact first couple of weeks just get you some points on board before you start trying to do what you want but clearly not people are just coming out here trying to play jumping whatever style of football they want and they're getting smashed for it we'll have a look at one later on though that i really enjoyed chef united qpr being next one let me just let me just get this up a minute so th this finished 2-2. The first half, apparently, obviously I didn't watch this, apparently first half an hour set, Sheffield United just looked like world beaters. They did finish 2-2. They were 2 nil up as well. QPR then went down to 10 men in 83rd minute and QPR scored after to get a point. And this is what I mean with... My, I've got a problem with Wilder. And if I was a Sheffield United fan, I'd, even, I'd have an even bigger problem with him because I do not think he's up to standard against even a, what you'd class as a mid-table championship team here. See if you enter as a QPR as a better manager than Chris Wilder is at Sheffield United, and I will die on that ill. Even if you look at the stats, very, very even. 
at Sheffield United, when Sheffield United have made some very, very good signings as well, Sheffield United starting 11 is nuts. It's the squad that's weak. I'm not going into that again. But Sheffield United starting 11 is honestly ridiculous. When you compare the two, this is absolute night and day. The standard with both these teams. QPR's best player, Chair, isn't even playing. And the reason that I think Wilder's... I, I'm blaming Wilder for this result. I think he's at fault here. It's, look at the subs that they've made. Obviously, QPR made one here in first half. That's going to be, like I say, he's down to injury. After that, they've made... So that one, two, three, four, five subs. Just just after red card, QPR's manager had made his fifth sub. He's done. At this point, Chris Wilder has made one. And, it, and it's a like for like. There's not enough change. You can't wait till 70... You can't wait to 85th minute to make your second sub in this league. You just can't do it. Maybe he's thinking at the same time, like, God, my, my, he's aware of his bench and the, the squad depth in there because he's bringing Slamani on as his first jumping sub or his second one even. But that's really, really poor to have been 2-0 up or 2-1 up at the time and then going up against a red card as well and still drawing. That is going to feel like a loss of Sheffield United fans. But, again... We how weak the league is at top this year, and they started on a minus, aren't they, as well? But we how weak it is, and how strong... How do I get back to this? And how strong this lineup is. If they'd have had a couple more boys in by now, or if they do get a couple more boys, and even, even with a donkey in charge, if United look good. QPR, though, again. Absolutely no to worry about. Fantastic manager. Plymouth drew at home to Wool. I actually called that one on TikTok. Um, I'm, I'm desperate for Rooney to succeed, man. I just think he is a great bloke. I don't think he will is the problem, but I really want him to, I'd really, really like to see Rooney succeed. Hull, uh, they're not going to be as good as they were last year, either. and obviously I didn't watch this game, but it's not the worst point, really, for either side, that. Norwich and Blackburn, again, looked a good game, looked quite even. Blackburn, even we had Smodics, proving that they can still score some goals, so maybe they'll be alright this season as well. This is just, this is just not on. A game week to a 5-0 win is just not on. And even if you look at the stats, Cardiff had more shots. They've got even possession, and it's 5 0. But again, let's have a look at this lineup. Right, Lyle Foster up front, Colliosho, Brownell and Cullen, Vitin Vitinho, a right mid in championship. The back four is ridiculous. They've got a keeper that's just got promoted to Premier League at net against this mess. Callum Chambers, Ramsey. Stop. Just stop. Cardiff's decision making with the signings is actually just horrific anyway. This, in fact, this Robertson, he's from City, isn't he? Well, he's going to be ridiculous then. In fact, they're on loan at Portsmouth last year. I do remember that guy. Very, very good signing. But the normal ones that they make, where they're going for big net, obviously Ramsey, Cardiff, and whatever. He'll, he'll play four games a year. Like Chambers. They go for such big names, Premier League names, on a lot of money that are offering very little. And obviously Burnley with lineup that they've got. The, the players aren't bench. Like Masuengo, the, this geezer from Premier League last season. Vegas on bench. Are we actually joking? This is not a fair team at all. This this should not be running around in championship. The gap between two teams in the same league, one that finished mid-table last season and one that's just come down from Premier League getting an embarrassing points tally, and the squad difference is that big. That is that is just obscene that the gap can be that big in the same league. Uh, but yeah, Burnley, forced to be reckoned with definitely, even with Scott Parker and Chargeau, I do not rate. Bristol City Millwall, this looked like an absolute rate game. This were a, this were a bookies nightmare. Obviously not a game for keepers to be rate proud. A seven shots on goal for Bristol City, four for Millwall, and it's ended up 4-3. The one shining light, I think, for Millwall is the eventual money that they're going to make off Roman SA because that block is unbelievable. Imaku, obviously, will be on left soon. I don't know why he didn't start, actually, this game. And Millwall, again, there'll be in no danger at all. But I think Bristol City are really, really on verge of building something good, mate. I really, really do. And obviously, they've conceded three goals at home to Millwall, or all teams, so it's not like best result ever, is it? But if you can if you can score four goals in your second game, not a bad start. West Brom and Leeds, that's a good point for both sides because West Brom are going to be very hard to beat at home. Carlos is a fantastic manager. Leeds, even though they've sold the best players, they've still got a super team and a shit manager in charge. If they're a good manager, say if, if, if we're swapping the gaffers here for this game, West Brom and Leeds, Carlos in charge of that Leeds team, they come away from here winning 3-0 easily. But we, the hindrance that Fark is, Leeds are still going to be up there, definitely. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know with that team. I, re I, I want to be wrong about, um, about me saying that they'll be good. I really want them to finish like 13th with, where they belong. But West Brom, I think both of them will be top six or thereabouts, especially Leeds. Obviously, Leeds will finish in top six, but I think West Brom are not far off. Portsmouth Luton, I think that's a really good result for Luton. To say that they had the keeper sent off for chuffing GBH in first half, I do think that is a good result. 
Portsmouth again, they've had two really good results. They've got Leeds away at first game and Luton at home. That's two teams that you'd originally think are going to be nailed on for top six that they've got two points from. A really good start for Portsmouth, though. And it is definitely more about like how you're playing rather than results. I, I think results mean very little in grand scheme of things. First, like, a couple of games. Obviously, you want your points, don't you? But except for this next one, Derby and Middlesbrough, there's very clearly a difference between the teams and the standard that they're both at. Regardless of the fact that Derby have won one nil here, you know for a fact that Middlesbrough are finishing at least 15 places higher than them by the time we're in April. Because I do actually think, defensively, Derby will be quite strong. Especially at home, you could see a lot of these type of results where they're getting absolutely slapped about. Pride Park is not an easy place to go. I, I've been four times and I've won zero. I've been relegated there. You know what I mean? It's literally the worst place ever. But I do like the defence. I mean, Cashin's a very, very good player. But overall, especially with Paul Warren in charge, he's going to be defensively minded in this league anyway with teams that he's been here with before. Rotherham, which he got relegated twice with. It could, that, that could carry on. That trend could carry on. But it's a very good win when you've been under cost from minute one to minute 90. Middlesbrough, they're going to be in no danger of finishing top six. They look very, very good side, these. If you can create this many chances every week with a good team, I mean, I think Finners as this season is going to be shit hot. But you've got him and that laugh up front. The Aiden Hackney's still there as well at middle. This is this is a very good team. A bit of experience with Luke Aylin as well. It's it's got it's, it's the makings of a team that you look like will be right right up there, Middlesbrough. And stats like this, they're gonna be now. There's a game missing on this. And there she is. Oh man, here we go. Absolutely shit. Like shit. Genuinely. The, let me look at the lineup. I, I need to see the rating of Beadle because he made a couple of saves as well that were like ridiculous. This, this would not have looked out of place as a six nil. If if you finish him four and the saves that he's made, I'm genuinely surprised it finished at that. But it's the style of play that they're trying to do. You can do you can play Danny Rose football at home when you're playing Plymouth. When they play Sunderland at home, they'll probably have a good go because it's at home. But when you're going away to a big team like this, and I feel like they'll they're gonna get tonked a couple of times. When they go to like a Burnley, Middlesbrough, Coventry, Leeds, West Brom, sides like this that have got much better starting 11s and much better squads than that of Wednesday, they are going to get slapped. As much as it pains me to say, I think Wednesday are going to be a decent side this year. I'm going I'm to just go back to it again. Top of this league this year is going to be crap. Wednesday are going to be top 10 just for the fact that they can slap these teams about at home. They had about 5 XG at home to Plymouth. That's great. But when you're playing teams that have got much better squads than they, you're not going to do that. And Sunderland are a good side, obviously. Like, look at the team. Their 11 very good. I feel like these are quite similar to Sheffield United in terms of the starting eleven is very good. The bench is it's all right. Adelaide off bench, the striker, this Russian, the decent players off bench, but they've not got the depth. I don't think to keep results like this up again. I think Sunderland might struggle away for a moment certain teams, but it's a very good start. These these two, I, I, you don't look into results too early, do you? But the, they play very very well. The stats, obviously, they don't pay a full picture then because Sunderland absolutely slapped him start to finish and Wednesday, obviously, were very good last week. These are both going to be top 10 teams, definitely. However, I just want to point this out quickly while I'm here. Barry Bannon is absolutely shit. And Chris Rigg, how old is this fella? Let's have a look. How old is Chris Rigg? 70, oh, he's been 17 for a couple of months. And he, I'm not even joking, I reckon he's had a better career than Barry Bannon already. He's got less relegations, that's for sure. As far as table's concerned, I'm not even getting table up. I, I won't even look at table at first 10 games. It's absolutely pointless. But there's some very, very good teams showing very good stuff, very early doors. The, the signs are there. You can you can see, can't you, a little bit when you're watching your team and you can feel some. As long as you're improving on last season, whatever your results were and your position were, that's good. Now, for League One, Birmingham. Away at Wickham, they were losing at our time because I had this on me bet as a draw, so I lost, obviously. But Birmingham obviously pulled it round to win. These are games that I think Birmingham will struggle at. At home, obviously, Reading looked very good. On, on opening game for League One, when it were um, on Sky, I thought Reading looked very good, and Reading definitely gave Birmingham a game, and a draw genuinely flattered Birmingham, I think. However, with this one, do you know what I mean? And, and this is on a minefield or a pitch. Wickham literally keep ball in play for about four minutes a week. They're an absolute joker a club. But... If the, this, this is good character in it, because they've gone one another down to a known goal. Obviously, Alpha May is going to get about 40 this season anyway. And the team, I don't even know how these blokes are, but if they're spending the amount of money that they are on him, they're going to be nuts. But again, like I just said, I do think they will come stuck at grounds like Wickham, like Lincoln, like Bristol Rovers. Teams that in this league finish mid table a lot of time and notoriously quite hard to beat. Maybe like a Shrewsbury. You know, sides like that. Definitely away at Crawley, actually. 
100 million percent when Birmingham were to Crawley, they are not winning that game. No chance. That's getting clipped when Birmingham win 4 0. But they are going to struggle at times. They're going to have to suffer a lot with some of the pitches and the conditions that they're going to be playing in. But it won't be long until they're in top two, and that'll be that. Just for the rest of the season. Rotherham, I don't even want to acknowledge them because they've got Steve Evans as manager and he's a fat bastard. They come out after a game, didn't it? In fact, first week, Rotherham, he won't even shake hands with. Rick. Brit Leighton Orient, they lost to our exit to somebody like that. Both them lost first week, and they went and shake hands with the gaffer. He's probably got chuffing shit fat all over his hands anyway. I won't want to shake his hand. But then after this draw with Bristol Rovers, he's come out and said that this is the best point that Bristol Rovers are ever going to get in their life because they've come to, they've come to the big, mighty Rotherham, played for a draw, and done exactly what they want to do. Is he forgetting how he played at Stevenage last year, this blog? And also, Bristol Rovers are a bigger team than Rotherham. Rotherham, Rotherham are non-existent until about 15 years ago. I don't know what he's on about. Just because Rotherham owners give Steve Evans a chuffing black card at Pie Van, he's, he's acting good. Rotherham is shit. And they're going to struggle to score. Clark Harris and Sam Nombe, I don't care about the names and what they've done about this league before. They are not going to score a lot of goals, Rotherham. It's going to go complete opposite way to last season where they conceded shitloads. I think they'll be quite good defensively because, I mean, they've signed out for Portsmouth back line anyway. They've just gone up. But going forward, I don't think they'll score enough to be proper, proper pushing for autos anyway. Bristol Rovers. They've done exactly what they set out to do. Go to a de decent side and get a point. Happy days. And Steve Evans is a fatty. Just want to put that out there again. Reading, very good win it on to Wigan. Like I said, they were really good away at Birmingham. They'd, I thought they'd take a couple of years to maybe build summer. But that striker, I, obviously, I don't know what's happened with this game. I'll have a look. Is that him again? I'd let me check. I've got to check last week's. Oh, my God, it's him again. It's him again. That that striker looks sick. Where have they got him from? What? He's been at Reading... What? I've never heard of this guy. Ever. He looks sick. Genuinely, away at Birmingham, best player I've ever seen. Anyway, very good win. Reading could be a bit of a force. Obviously, we're getting now they're still Charlie Hughes. I think they're, they're just writing off playoffs this season already. They're, they're, they're not as good as I thought they were going to be, performance-wise, against us. Literally, second half against us in Cup. I know we both had, like, stranger teams out, but they could not touch ball for about half an hour. And we haven't even had a strikers yet. In. So, we're going to... Maybe not as good as I thought originally. Reading, definitely a lot better. Northampton, again, that's a very good win as well. Mansfield-Burton. Let me get this up. Let me just get this up right now. Let me get this up. They done play. Shit. These two, definitely two at smaller sides in league, but I think they're definitely are both staying up. Burton, the signings that they've made are very, very good. Mansfield, obviously, they've got Cluffy in charge. Against us, I thought they were a good side. And they're both creating a lot of chances. The lineups of these two teams, the, this, these are mid-table League One sides. In terms of like the personnel that they've got and the players that they've got, these are not going to struggle. Either of these, I don't think. There's, a, there's much worse size than both of these, anyway. Which I like. I, I love seeing smaller teams do well, me. Like Bert, Bert, I mean, Burton got a championship, didn't they, a few years ago? They were there with us. But I love seeing smaller teams do well and have good recruitment and stuff like that and, and run your club well. Because a lot of teams just think, oh, well, because you've got this many fans and we've got this many fans, we should be here and you should be here. It's, Chuffy now, are you a caveman? You've got Bournemouth and Brighton and Brentford in Premier League and Oldham in non-league, you know what I mean? <laughs> Two very good sides, both recruited very well. Both playing decent stuff by the looks of it. Uh, they'll both be sound them easily. Right, but, let's get on to Big Dog. <laughs> that, that's absolute ass. I'm sorry, I'm looking at them stats. I was there. That is complete dog, unless it's all second half. Right, that makes a lot more sense. I didn't think we were that good. To be honest with you, we were all right, don't get me wrong. And this Lincoln team's definitely worse than last year's. And you can tell, like, the, the forward line is nowhere near what it was with, like, Taylor when they were there last year. But I thought we were all right defensively. This Slanina is an absolute nutcase. Why Chelsea have given us him, I have no idea. And his back three, I think, does, did look quite strong. Roberts, I can't... It's the experience in it. The experience is definitely there, and that's why we've got him in. Pines, I think, is his best centre half. I think Dijavigne is arguably his weakest point there. See, this is what I mean. Earl with lowest rating at defence, and he was his best player. He was best player on pitch by a mile, Earl. Connell Craig and Phillips, best midfield in the league, but I thought all of them were quite quiet, especially Phillips. I didn't think Phillips were that good um, over there. Watson Cosgrove. Cosgrove, very, very good finish. Very good finish. And we're a tall team now as well, which I really like, because set pieces are a bastard half at time in this league when you're going up against some of the lumps. But again... Get me two forwards in. It's over. I've been to Lincoln twice now. Obviously, we've been here the last three seasons and we've drawn twice away at theirs. It's an horrible place to go and win. I genuinely think this is one of the hardest grounds in League One to go and win it. 
I, I stand by that. I think it's an horrible place to go. Atmosphere's atmosphere. The atmosphere is quite good, even though there's some absolute dick weird drum grow up. And Lincoln mid, mid table team this time. I, I, I think the worse than last year. But again, they played all right, especially second half. That finish from whoever that blow was were very good. But yeah, we're going up. So Uddersfield and Stevenage. Uddersfield and Stevenage. Uddersfield have won again. The first win away at Peter were very good. This is definitely a Michael Duff game, though, if I've ever seen it, because they probably uh, they went two and a up and they could have easily seen it out. But it's same as us. Pardon me, sorry. It focuses on winning arse rather than winning games. So if he's two and a up at first half, it will happily sit back and just play that out. And it does leave for very nervy endings to games. You're probably going to concede a lot of last minute equalizers, I think. And if you went for it a little bit more, which he didn't do at Barnes, we'd start winning and then it'd just be about seeing them results out. If you look at our results under Duff, there were a lot of 1 nils, 2 1s, 3 2, stuff like that. The games are always very close when you want to try and just like smash somebody and run away with it, like Stockport have done away at Blackpool, you know what I mean? Or what Peterborough seem to constantly do. But Uddersfield definitely one of the better sides in this league. Definitely. Cambridge and Crawley, I don't want to be too negative and say about where I think teams will finish relegation wise. How Crawley's gaffer gets these boys playing, I, d I do not know. They've sold all the best players that got promoted and they've won the first two games. Who is this guy? Anyway, very good win away for Crawley because th this is a six point I've ever. ever... Oh, this is a six pointer if I've ever seen it when it comes to it to end the season. Two teams that are going to be down there. Very good win, Crawley. Stockport winning 3 0 away at Blackpool. Holy moly. Why they've got Louis Barry, I don't know. I genuinely do not know. But they've got a very, very good manager in Chalmer. They've got a very good forward line. Blackpool, I've got Ashley Fletcher. So I feel like Blackpool are just missing a decent manager, to be honest, because to be fair, this team is not that good. It's it's a worse team than last year, definitely, after they lost uh, that centre half and they lost Karamoka and Nabelli were on loan, obviously. Rhodes is another year older, stuff like that. They've got a shit gaffer. Chalk and cheese, really, and where these two teams are, are performance wise. But very good win for Sopot. Should be Peterborough, again, I'd. It's bleak for Shrewsbury, let's just put it that way. Peterborough, they've still got Poku, and to be honest, I thought he was the only good player left because they've sold everything else that moves. They've made so much money this summer, but that is a right win. They go and put four pass under this early, very good start. And then Charlton, again, Nathan Jones, this is just what he's going to do. It's similar to Duff. It's, they're not going to lose a lot of games, but they're all going to be close. It's going to be a lot of 1-0s, a lot of 2-1s, stuff like that. I think they'd only lost one game under uh, John since he came in, but they drew about 15. It looks like it could be going the same way because this were, la this were a late goal for him to win it. And Leighton Orient are a good side. But ultimately, performance-wise, you know what you're going to get from Nathan Jones and it's going to be very edgy games, but you're not going to lose a lot. And then finally, I stuck this on uh, half-time in Brentford game because of some stupid decision with VAR and ref blowing his whistle too early and all that crap. This, I think Bolton are a good team. That's that's a given, in it? Bolton are a good team. They've been in playoffs last couple of times. They're always going to be up here. They're one of bigger teams in the league. But I think that is a much better point for Wrexham than it is Bolton this early on. Again, performance-wise, Bolton were better team, definitely. Comfortably better team, and they're definitely going to be up there. There's a very clear difference in quality between the two sides. Obviously, this is a lot of these players are League 2 tackle or bottom in League 1 that Wrexham have got. But if they can come and get a point at somewhere like Bolton, Happy days. They're obviously miles off it in terms of quality. Like, you look at the Bolton team. That's ridiculous. That has never seen a League One side. And this just definitely has. This keeper, a Conquo, that they got from Arsenal, they were on loan there last season, one, and then they've got him on a free. Top, top business. Because he is fantastic. I do think they might struggle football away at, t away at bigger teams, but you're going to do anyway. No, no one. It, we don't go to Bolton and keep ball a lot. So, Wrexham definitely are. Do you know what I mean? But it's definitely a better point for Wrexham. Bolton, 100%, though a dead cert for top six they're going to be up there again definitely and that's that obviously i'm not doing league two because i don't watch it enough so it's not fair for me to get an opinion on something that i've actually got very little knowledge of yeah, why do you talk about championship league one then thank you all for watching again if this is well and people want to see it then i'm happy to do this every week i might i might do it as a live thing because i, like, I just love talking about football and i love talking about championship and league one i'm sorry about the overlay but the last video apologies it was just a li little project i want to see how it went don't like it that's fair enough i'll never do it again me for trying sorry but yeah thank you as always for watching tell me something to put on this wall obviously i'm gonna have to wait till i get paid i'm not i'm not that rich yet 
But I want something on that wall. I want like a big thing. I want something. I tried looking for a big John Stones poster. I tried looking for a big John Stones cutout to go in that corner, but I can't find anything. Give me some ideas. Thank you. Um, but thank you all for watching again. Love you all. And I'll see you later. And the reds are going up. <laughs>